It was our last night in Vegas. My husband went off to play blackjack, and I beelined to my Wheel of Fortune machine, hoping to recoup my losses with a few spins of the wheel. I was on a roll with daydreams of sipping champagne with Vanna White when all of a sudden I heard active shooter and all bets were off. People everywhere began screaming hysterically and frantically running past me. My entire body was shaking. I could hardly breathe. My brain kept yelling, run, Lainey, get the hell out of this casino. I wanted to run so badly, but my body wouldn't let me. I didn't know what to do. Our natural instinct is to flee from impending danger. But sometimes our instincts don't match our bodies. I've lived with an invisible disability for 52 years, and this was the first time I'd ever felt utterly crippled and powerless. Fortunately, we learned later that there was never an active shooter in the casino. It was all just a horrific mistake. False reports of gunshots had triggered mass panic in several area hotels. Had it been real? I'd have been a sitting duck with the additional threat of being trampled by strangers, expecting I could run and keep up with the crowd. I was born with a rare inherited neuromuscular disease called Charcot-Marie-Tooth. From just looking at me, you wouldn't know that I'm wearing leg braces underneath my clothing. Without them, I'd topple right off the stage, and you'd probably assume I'd had one too many cocktails. I know I'm not alone. Most of us have something invisible, whether it's underneath our clothing or behind the mask we wear every day. Imagine living with a secret that affects almost everything you do. Imagine how isolating it would feel to never share your secret. For those of us with invisible disabilities, revealing our secrets can be a huge gamble and not a fun slot machine kind. It's like putting all the cards you've been dealt with in life face up and then betting it all on humanity. That's how it often feels for the 61 million adults in the US living with disabilities. Look around. That's one out of every four of you. You've probably seen us rolling by in wheelchairs, walking with canes and service dogs. Maybe you've even seen some of us running marathons with missing limbs. But have you seen the 80% of us with invisible disabilities? Of course not. How could you? It's not like we're all wearing matching t-shirts at Disney. But we are a club. Are you a member? Have you ever used a guest pass and joined temporarily after an accident or illness? Odds are most of you will join our club at some point. We have rolling admissions, and we're the most inclusive club in town. Our members have everything from MS, diabetes, vision loss, and chronic pain, to lupus, ADD, depression, and nowadays, long COVID. You may not always see them, but our disabilities are real, and so are the challenges of living with them. A big one is deciding how, who, and when to disclose our disabilities and if even doing so is worth the risk. I kept my disabilities a secret for most of my life. Growing up in the 80s, I wanted a flawless body like the models had in Seventeen magazine. We Gen Xers, we didn't have Instagram posts encouraging body acceptance or TikTok videos of teens dancing around to Madonna tunes in mini skirts and neon leg braces. Before the internet, our awareness of people with disabilities was limited to what we saw in front of us and learned through the narrow and filtered lenses of our world. 
The only kids I knew growing up with disabilities took special buses to school and were kept separated from the rest of us. I felt alone and I just wanted to blend in. <laughs> but as my need for leg braces increased, my acceptance of them did not. I'd fall a lot and my disability became more noticeable. Complete strangers would ask, what's wrong with your feet? I'd reply with a lie, like I'd been injured skiing or rock climbing, something I thought sounded cool but could never do. Back then, I didn't know that those unwanted questions were my introduction to ableism in our society. Have you heard the term ableism? Another ism, I know, but this one's discrimination and prejudice against people with disabilities, the largest minority group in the world. Ableism can be overt, like when institutions fail to comply with the ADA and other disability rights laws. But in our everyday lives, ableism manifests in far less obvious and often unintentional ways. We hear comments like, you're too pretty to use a wheelchair. We get unsolicited advice like, have you tried keto? It cured my aunt's MS. And we're questioned whether our disabilities are real. But you don't look sick. College student Lexi Baskin shared her experience after parking in an accessible spot. Lexi returned to her car one day and found it plastered with angry signs accusing her of faking her disability. One read, we've seen you come and go, and there is nothing handicapped about you. Your tag must be borrowed or fake, and we'll make every effort to see you fined and towed for being such a selfish, terrible person. At the time, Lexi was undergoing treatment for a brain tumor. When you're met with judgment and ignorance, it can trigger internalized ableism. You think, I look fine, so why don't I feel fine? Given the stigma, why would anyone risk the gamble of disclosing their disabilities? It took me 46 years to disclose mine. I showed the world my hand when I launched my website, Trendable. I posted photos of myself showing my leg braces, and told friends and strangers that I live with disabilities. It was terrifying being so raw and vulnerable. I had no clue how others would react. But my gamble paid off big time. Not only was coming out cathartic, but it actually strengthened my relationships. People came out of the woodwork to share with me their own invisible challenges. And five years later, I've helped countless others like myself to embrace their disabilities through shoe, fashion, and confidence-building tips. In order to erase the stigma of disability, we need more people to share that they're card-carrying members of our club. And we need everyone's help to make it less risky for them to do so. But why? What would the payout be for our world? Well, for starters, people with disabilities have innate skill sets that brands, companies, and our whole society is totally missing out on. We're expert organizers and planners because we have to be. Imagine living in a big city like New York and having to navigate public transportation, accessible public transportation. That's like earning a PhD in planning and logistics. We're also designers and inventors. We create workarounds for everyday life in a world that wasn't designed for us. Electric toothbrushes, audiobooks, phones, keyboards, all invented by people with disabilities. And you know that speech-to-text technology that allows Siri to remind you to call your mother-in-law? You can thank us for that one, too. Imagine all the potential new gifts we could bring to the world if we were hired in every industry and thriving as our authentic selves. In a world where disabilities are kept secret, everyone loses. 
So how about we all win instead with a few sure bets? First, believe us. If someone tells you they can't do something, don't assume they're lying. Instead, ask, how can I help? What do you need? Second, words matter. Let's avoid ableist and disempowering language like he's handicapped or she suffers from MS. Having a disability is not a tragedy. Many of us are pretty happy and just trying to live our best lives with the cards we've been dealt. So please, don't say we're inspiring for just leaving the house and going to Target. Third, let's make accessibility part of the status quo. If you're planning an event, don't assume that just because no attendee uses a wheelchair, that stairs and bathroom locations aren't a concern. Finally, let's stop making false assumptions. If you've met one person with a disability, then you've met one person with a disability. Each of us is a unique individual with differing wants, needs, and dreams. Our one sure commonality with one another and every human being is the desire to be seen, accepted, and valued in the world. Our differences are our strengths. Your accommodations, empathy, and grace allow us to be ourselves. If we were to assume that all of our invisible challenges equip us with innate gifts that could benefit the world, then sharing our secrets would not only be safe, they'd trigger a jackpot spin and a lifetime payout we could all share and prosper from. Okay, who's ready to gamble? Thank you. <laughs>